We're returning to daily news coverage today on CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus explaining events from around the world. It's been five days since Hawaii's Kilauea volcano started erupting again, but a lot of the destruction is occurring miles from the mountain's summit. This all started Thursday on Hawaii's Big Island. Kilauea, which means both spewing and much spreading, lived up to its name. First, molten rock and sulfur dioxide shot into the air. Then, cracks formed in the earth miles to the east of the volcano, and entire communities of hundreds of people were told to get out of their homes. A 6.9 magnitude earthquake hit Friday, and by the end of the weekend, 10 fissures, openings in the earth, had appeared, and dozens of homes have been destroyed as lava seeped out and consumed them. It's not just the molten rock that's a threat. The vents are releasing toxic fumes that aren't safe to breathe. And though first responders have masks that help protect them, Hawaii's Department of Health says these masks aren't available to the public. So the best thing they can do is leave when police or fire officials tell them to. The Red Cross has set up two shelters where those who've evacuated can stay. Public schools on the Big Island are still open, but education officials say no one who's had to evacuate will be penalized for missing class. The Kilauea volcano has been erupting continuously since 1983. Encyclopedia Britannica describes it as the most active volcanic mass in the world. Its previous eruptions have lasted for months or even years, so this activity isn't new and it's also not predictable. The eruptions seem incessant. A cluster of fissures spewing molten rock and devouring all that's in its path, including more than two dozen structures. From a helicopter, we can see the destruction is dynamic. At the head of the churning lava, a curtain of fiery red, visible through a veil of smoke and volcanic gas. Earlier in the day, this molten march glowed brightly in the pre-dawn light. Now, it's clear more buildings, likely homes, are lost. These volcanic vents continue to ravage the community of Leolani Estates, opening unpredictably along the lower east rift zone of the Kilauea volcano. There is the circular house where you can see where the lava first broke out. You can see that it's still smoldering, surrounded by the dead trees that were burnt there. The fissures are actually breaking open further and further out the rift zone right now. Uh, so pretty much every morning I've come out, it's been a little bit higher up. The destruction snakes across the landscape in waves of black. We head about 15 miles to the source. That big crater there, that is All of this began when, to the southwest, the Pua'o'o vent of Kilauea collapsed. So that used to be almost flat up top, two craters up there, and all collapsed into one big hole. How it collapsed up here, it just moved all of that bad spot all around, and now this is why we're seeing this outbreak. An outbreak that continues to threaten thousands of Hawaiians with eruptions, earthquakes, and toxic emissions. But while scientists know what is happening, they don't know how long it will last. 10-second trivia. Crude oil, also known as petroleum, is made up primarily of what element? Hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, or oxygen? While crude oil contains all of these elements, it's mostly made up of carbon. A few years ago, the fall in oil prices was so dramatic, tumbling more than 75 percent. But crude is staging a comeback, rising about 20 percent in the past year. So what is driving the rise? First, demand is much higher than anticipated, especially from countries like China, India, Japan, and South Korea. World consumption is expected to cross 100 million barrels per day in the coming months. And when it does, it will be the first time in history. Second, supply is limited. Even though the United States is flooding the market with crude, the most in 40 years, other major players are doing exactly the opposite. The two largest oil exporters, Saudi Arabia and Russia, are taking millions of barrels off the market to drive up prices. And other big suppliers like Venezuela, Libya and Nigeria are dealing with economic and political crises at home. 
That's limiting how much they can produce. Then there's the unknown. Yemeni missile launches into Saudi Arabia. Ongoing tensions with regards to the Iran nuclear agreement. U.S. involvement into Syria. All these forces combined have the market worried and driving up that price of crude. We first reported on Callie Sweeney last September. He was making news as a 2017 CNN hero for his work with the Downtown Boxing Gym Youth Program. It uses the sport of boxing to help motivate and bring a sense of family to hundreds of students in Detroit, Michigan. Today's follow-up follows Sweeney as he meets with a student several states away in New Hampshire who hadn't trained with Sweeney but was inspired by his work. Dear Mr. Sweeney, as a part of my eighth grade assignment, I was directed to choose someone who I believe represented a hero. As, as you, you can probably, probably tell, I have chosen you because I believe you are a great representation of a hero. I admire you for starting a program after coming out of hard times. You didn't just come up with the idea and put it off for another time or wait for someone else to come up with the idea. You, you got, got yourself, yourself out of your situation and started building on an idea that you believe could change the lives of innocent children. If, if I'm being, being honest, when I was researching, I hadn't been expecting a boxing program to change many people's lives. But I'm but not I'm too much a fan of boxing, and that might have influenced my thinking. But you prevent children from making a mistake that changes their lives completely. And coming from a student in Alton, New Hampshire, that's good enough for me. It's cold, it's cold. You know, the kids who come and thank me, I'll say to those guys, like, you know, as much as you think I helped you, you helped me more. Because before I didn't have a purpose, and now, this gives me a purpose to live. And so for a young girl to write me a letter that I feel like it's pushing me forward, I gotta meet her in person. I gotta tell her thank you. As a child, Kali was abandoned, so he turned to the only place he knew, the streets of Detroit. People he turned to provided protection and the sense of family he needed. But as he had said, it came at a price. Val, come up here for a second. Remember we said that he wanted to Skype with us? Yes. Um, he decided to do a little more than that. Can I introduce Mr. Kali Sweeney from Downtown Boxing Gym Youth Program from Detroit, Michigan. Oh. <laughs> I was really shocked. I was not expecting that at all. How could I ever expect someone to respond that way to, you know, a, an assignment that I gave? Hello everybody, how you guys doing? <laughs> this young lady right here, she inspired me. Every day people call me a hero, but they don't know that I have bad days too. I was really stressed out one week and I got a letter from her and it, it picked up my spirit. It made me feel good. Had you expected to change so many lives? That was, that was her first question. My goal was to touch as many people as possible, but I, knew, I never knew that it would grow this fast because I was just one person. I'm so honored to meet him, meet somebody like Holly Sweeney who changes lives every single day. For 10 out of 10 today, it's one thing to stop and smell the roses, but if you see one of these, you'll want to hold your nose and pass on by. It's technically a Titan Arum, but it's called the corpse flower because it smells like decaying flesh or rotting meat. Mm. It's incredibly rare, but several of them are growing on a Pennsylvania man's porch. He says he didn't know what exactly the plants were until they started blooming, but when he caught a whiff, it all made sense. It planted a titanic aroma. When flowering, it's overpowering and it doesn't take long to nose, something's not bouquet. That's the best way to make puns about a corpse flower, deadpan. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10.